There's no more putting it off. We've got to shorten this front Dana 44. Now, I feel like I've repeated myself quite a lot, but this bad boy used to be 65 inches wide. And we decided in the last video that we liked the um, 53 of the rear. Now, in the front of the car, typically, for these off-roaders, you see the front track is a little bit wider than the rear, but I really don't want to go that much wider because already with 53 inches, my tires are going to stick out one and three quarters inches over the body. And I feel like that's about as much leeway as you're going to get before you start getting into trouble. So maybe I'll go for 54, 55, but um, probably not, maybe 54. So we're gonna do a little bit of measuring, see what we can get away with. For now, I would just really like to shorten that uh, long tube, but that might not be in the cards. So let's get to it. So I do have a rough idea of how much we gotta cut off. Like I said, we're going for around 53 and this thing is 65. So that's about a foot. I roughly marked it right here, just to sort of see how much I was gonna be chopping, see how that felt. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't feel good, truth be told. But um, it is what it is. This Dana 44 is probably overkill for what we're gonna be doing, but it was the right price. There's a lot of good deals being ran for 4th of July right now for uh, Dana 44 parts. So believe it or not, this is cheaper than going for a uh, 30. So let's go for a quick look. That is 49 and a quarter. All right, something to consider is that the tube isn't quite that knuckle-to-knuckle -knuckle measurement that we took. If you can see right here, there's a little lip on it. So we're just going to measure that. This is definitely something where you're going to want to measure thrice and cut once. Uh, point 0.1 each side. So it's gonna take a foot, so just about right here where the inside of this line was anyway. Let's do a little bit of measuring on the front, see where we can maybe decide to stick our uh, spring perches, because this is a big old casting on the side. So it'd be great if I can just have it off not on the big old casting and just do it on the tube. So this car might not have been a gambler before, but it was definitely gambled. Look at this. Someone bashed this thing off of stuff hard, <laughs> even though it was just a little two wheel. Look at that, all crooked, all crooked. Anyway, we're gonna take our measurements of the front box. That is uh, 26 and three quarters. ID is 22. So it should be 37 now. 37. And like I said, it was 27 on the inside of the box. 27, so that's five inches in on either side. That would put the outside of our box. Uh, 37 minus five. So I understand that's pretty far off. 32. And then five off. Okay, there's the inside of the box. Interesting. So something I do see here is this is gonna be pretty close. The box, the end of the box is here. So our spring, it's gonna be like a two and a half spring. So that's gonna, you know, that's gonna make our way over here. And our um, spring perch mount is going to be like an inch over there but I think we can avoid that with a couple of things now I'm building I would say 95% of what I see here on the most detailed instructions that I could find and that is a ad old listing I'd bring a trailer for a Datsun 621 or excuse me Datsun 521 4x4 so the one I bring a trailer it's got a Dana 30 in it and probably out of a CJ. It was a period modification, so done in the 70s. 
not too much to work with aside from CJ's, and it would have been the right width anyway. So, um, what they did there is they just stuck a big piece of square tube on the front. And seeing how beat up that piece of square tube is, I think that's a pretty good idea. If we're going to have some 4x4 four four forces going on here, it'd be a good idea to stick some more reinforcement on the front there. Extend it a little bit. That would also allow us to put some bigger leaf springs on it. You know, bring back a little bit of the shape that was lost right there. But one thing that you can see in the bottom of that build is when they did bring this box out, they moved the spring mounts out a little bit. So like I said, probably an inch is about all we would need. And an inch isn't really going to eat up any space at all. I do want to keep this uh, sway bar. So this sticks out inch and a half. So we got about an inch and a half of um, clearance anyway before we would hit this... Um, this sway bar. So as long as our tubing and our springs are thereabouts, we're not actually gonna lose anything. And that's a pretty respectable steering angle. So I think we're good to start cutting. We only need to cut the long tube side. So we do have a little bit of leeway here. Like I mentioned, there's a bit of offset on this tube and you could poke out an eighth too far in or too far out and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. So we don't want to be messing with that. We don't want to just go, you know, any kind just because we got a little bit of leeway. We're still going to try to keep things exact, especially because I don't have a big chop saw, big band saw. I do have this, the old tape trick. Just going to lay out a ring of this uh, painter's tape. Here's our mark for 53. I totally covered our mark there because I want to be on the safe side and stick out, if anything. Well, I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty nervous. There's no going back from here. But uh, at the same point, there's no going forward unless I do it. So, here's nothing. Should have put a timer on that. That was bananas. <laughs> that had to have taken like 45 minutes. Well, the job's not done yet. Still gotta get this knuckle off. And um, if you don't shorten it too much, you know, it'd be pretty easy to pull it out. But um, doing it this way, you're gonna have to take the grinder, cut off wheel, whatever, and just eat away at this weld until we're flush with the knuckle. Then uh, once we got all this tube off, we'll go from there. Now most of that weld is gone, as far as I can tell, and the tube is cut nice and short. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the Sawzall and just cut that into segments and then try to pound it out. After a significant amount of grinding, we're now ready to actually like notch this knuckle and start trying to pound it out. If you could see, there's a very faint line. It's hard to show. Oh yeah, you can see it right there, barely. There's a very faint line right around the midpoint of the knuckle. Whoa, that's hot. And that means we are finally through the weld. I tried to uh, notch it with the Sawzall and pound it out a little early before actually getting to this point. But now that we're there, we can flip it over and give her the beans. Got it. Man, that was arduous. Took the Dremel and I put a little shoulder on our tube and a corresponding shoulder on our knuckle. And now it's time to get it on there. Just got it oriented just about the right way I want it. Won't be able to make fine adjustments until we go there. All right, that's started. So we got that started on there and got everything level. Um, from this exercise, I came to realize that my, uh, my garage is not very level, so that's about the best we could do. 
check camber going to have like nine degrees of camber and then as far as caster goes this is the most flat spot half degree but if that's what it says that's what we'll do um, I should mention at this point that if you didn't keep one side and you didn't take measurements you're kind of screwed so we're just gonna base the other side off of this one and go from there Alright, got it pounded on there. I'll admit I did use the torch. Let's get our measurements checked. Thirty-seven and a quarter, that's what we were shooting for. And our caster was point uh point four, point two ish, point six. Get that right up against there. I can live with that. Half a degree. And our camber was eight or nine. Eight point nine or eight point six. Yeah, I'm thinking that's pretty good. Now it's welding time. Okay, so I just heated the piss out of this thing. And so that should get me halfway there then my crappy 110 welder will do the rest. And I'll have you know that welding is an art. And baby, I'm about to finger paint. So stay tuned, get ready. If you care about welding, you might wanna just walk away. Oh yeah, that's garbage. I think I might just tack it and then take it to someone or somewhere that's got, that's got a welder with some chest hair. Oh. Now I'm just gonna rotate it to the other side and give it a tack there too. Well, there we go, there is our Dana 44 shortened down so it'll be 53 inches once i got all the other garbage on i really did not believe how short this turned out that pumpkin looks gigantic i had to come move it over here double check all my math but yeah that should work that is going to be a monster i hope it doesn't uh try to bump its way into my engine either way what's done is done we'll have to move the oil pan around if it comes to that but i'm pretty stoked the way this turned out minus those garbage welds um, the plan from the beginning was to just tack this and then take it over to a friend's that has a 220 welder And I just laid down the most garbage tack and I just thought to myself I can do better Dzz, I can do better Dzz, I can do better and it, at the end of that I was all the way around and well it turns out I couldn't do better <laughs> So I ground all that in shame and we'll um, we'll take it to him and get it done, right? For now. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. Shoots